Let's take a look at how you do a definite integral using Maple. So here might be some standard integration problems. And the basic idea for doing a definite integral is to first write in the function you want to integrate. So for the first one it would be x plus 1 divided by the square root of 2 times x minus 5. So I'll enter that function just to make sure I've got it correct. And then like I've been doing pretty much all of the time, I will select it, right click, and find the right choice off of the menu. And in this case, there's integrate with respect to x. But when I do this, I get the integration command that gives me antiderivatives, the indefinite integral command, not the definite integral command. I want a number, not an antiderivative. But if I scour through this list, there's only one command for integrate right here. And that's the bad news. There is no right-click command for definite integral. The good news, though, is that it's not terribly hard to modify this syntax to make it a definite integral. If you know how to plot, you already know what the trick is. This is an integral that goes between x values of 3 and 7. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to modify the int command and write it as x equals 3 dot dot 7. I'm going to put a range of x values. And when I rerun the command now, instead of getting an antiderivative, I get 34 thirds. I get a numeric value. So there's the trick for making definite integrals. Let's try it on a more complicated one, this guy right here. Now the function I'm working with is x cubed times the sine of x squared. And I gotta put those parentheses in. And next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna integrate this by right clicking. Now that integration gets me an indefinite integral, an antiderivative. I need to go and put on the limits from zero to the square root of pi over six. So I'll go back to this command and I'm gonna modify it. X goes from zero dot dot the square root of capital pi over six. And now when I rerun the command, Oops, got a little bit crazy there. When I rerun the command, I get an exact value of 1 fourth minus 1 24th pi times the square root of 3. Now, if I want a numeric value so I can get some eyeball estimate on this, um, hopefully by now you've figured out that the numeric approximation command is eval. So I want to take an approximation of line 4 over there. And I come up with about 0 0.02, so really small numeric value. Let's take a look at the other two. And again, I'm going to clean up my space so I don't keep falling off the screen. What if we want to go and integrate cosine of x squared dx from minus 1 to 1? So I'll type cosine of x squared. There's my function. I'll select it, right click, and choose integrate. Whoa! This thing comes out looking horrifying right here. But remember, I don't care about what the antiderivative is. I only care about what the integral is. So I'll evaluate this from minus 1 to 1. And when I rerun the command, wah, it's still just as horrifying as it was before. This is the exact value of this integral, but unfortunately it's in a language that makes no sense to me. I don't know what Fresnelk means and all of these crazy numbers here. But once again, this is pure algebraic answers. I can use, still use the eval command, and I'll plug in line 2 there and get a numeric approximation. So Maple is capable of solving very complicated definite integrals and in giving very complicated output, but you can always use eval to get a numeric output. Well, what about this last one right here? And again, let me clean up the space below. What if I want to go and take the square root of sine, oops, sorry about that, of sine of 1 over x squared? So there's the function, square root sine 1 over x squared. I'll select it right click and tell it to integrate once again. And unfortunately, this is the example from the other podcast. This is one that Maple doesn't know how to do an indefinite integral for. Interestingly enough though, if I put in 1 to 4 and I run it, well, it still says it doesn't know how to do this integral. If it can't find the antiderivative, how's it going to go and use the fundamental theorem of calculus? Here's the really interesting bit though. If I type in eval, this line, get a numeric approximation of it, Maple can still churn out a numeric value. What Maple ends up doing is if it can't do it algebraically, it will break it down and do it by Riemann sums, and it comes up with a Riemann approximation of that, and Maple's very good about this. So those are the basic tools you have for computing a definite integral.